Alright everyone, welcome back to some more of the house in Fata Morgana. As usual guys, I want to thank you all for the love and support you kindly give this series. It really means a lot. So as of this video, we finally finished Yukimasa's uh, story. Or at least his version of it, which is uh, the insight we needed to get so that we can understand what was going on in his head and the events that led up to where we are now. So. I'll let you guys see for yourselves how that is. You tell me what you think, and we're going to continue on from there. So I hope you all continue to enjoy watching. Now let's keep it rolling. All right, welcome back, everyone, and here we go. You're obviously not finding any respectable work being an ex-slave, so I take it you're still in the business of getting your hands dirty, are you not? I assume you're playing cat burglar or something, living off whatever you can swipe from the nearest unlucky bastard. Correct. Isn't it comical then that you would choose God's sacred house to stretch your legs in, you filthy dog? I absolutely agree. I thought that would get a reaction out of you, but it seems you've got no bite in you today. Never mind, let's get down to business. You're going to help me out with a little something I'm working on. Help you with what exactly? Something that's going to make me a lot of money. And if you lend a hand, I'll make sure you're well taken care of. Along with the church you're so fond of. And the nun you've taken a liking to. That nun of yours has made quite the name for herself. Out in the city proper, people have started calling her the Saintess. They're right about that, she is. Ha! The commoners love their heroes and saints. They eat that rubbish right up. But saint or not, you can simply create food from nothing. Her work is causing financial troubles for the church, is it not? It is, yes. If you help me with this, I'm offering you an entirely new church. One where she has complete control to do as she wishes. She'll make it into the biggest church in the city. She'll be able to help even more people, which should surely please her. What would you have me do? Jumping at the first whiff of scraps, you really are a dog, aren't you? I don't like conversations that overstay their welcome. Hmm, fair enough. Then let's get down to business. Not far from here lives a witch whose blood has the power to cause miracles. Miracle blood? Sounds like a sham to me. You never know. They say the sound of her first cry brought rain to the land where she was born, saving the whole village from drought. And they say her blood has the power to cure any disease. I'll worry about the veracity of the rumors later. Right now, all I want is for you to capture her and bring her to me. Explain something to me, Lord. You said that if I helped you, then no one would be able to save more people than she does now. So how does capturing this witch accomplish that? I'm glad you know how to listen, dog. We'll be turning the blood into a miracle elixir which she will then distribute to patrons at the church, in exchange for teeth, of course. Selling it, then. Selling isn't quite the right word, but if that's how you want to think of it, by all means. The commoner's beloved saint is handing out an all-powerful miracle medicine. They'll lap it up. And in turn, you'll make a fortune. Exactly. Money I can use to support her church. It'll be a boon to the city's economy as well. A single witch's freedom is all it will cost for everyone here to come out happy. So what will it be? Will you help? Or will I have to? I'll help. I have no reason not to. Decisive and a good listener. Excellent. Once I've captured the witch, where do I take her? I have a mansion set aside where your nun can run her church. There's an observation tower on the grounds. The witch will be kept locked up there to ensure we have a constant supply of blood. Okay. When do you want me to get her? You're just chomping at the bit now, aren't you? I thought you'd hesitate at least a little, but I guess it was foolish of me to presume to understand how a killer's mind works. All the resources I put into investigating you and everyone close to you were wasted, it would seem. Do you even have a conscience? Don't act like you're any different. I assure you, I have a conscience. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't necessary for the growth of the city. No, I mean you're as much a murderer as me. 
You would never come up with a scheme like this if your hands were clean. Watch your mouth, dog. Don't you dare insinuate I would ever condescend to your level. I agreed to the Lord's terms. A couple of days later, I made my way out to the location the Lord had given me, a small cottage by a lake, where the witch was said to live. I had been instructed to take her alive, but not that I wasn't allowed to harm her, so my plan was to force my way in and immobilize her as soon as she opened the door. The Lord was right. I didn't have anything resembling a conscience. I was too far gone to be bothered by the prospect of disabling a witch. Not even the fact that I had found a degree of solace in my relationship with Pauline would change that. However, who's there? When I heard the witch's voice through the door, I froze. It was the girl from four years earlier. I didn't even have to see her, I knew right away. I wouldn't mistake that voice, the stream of pure, clear water cutting through the grime for anything. I would never forget the first thing that had ever managed to suppress my desires, my first tether. When the Lord told me about the witch, I never once expected it to be her. Who is it? Are you the witch with the miracle blood? My hand rested on the hilt of my sword. I had at first meant to break down the door if she wouldn't open it for me. Please leave. However, when I heard that voice, my hand fell limp. Please stay away from my home. I am in need of your blood. Could you not spare a little? I have nothing to spare for a man like you. My blood is only for the sick and needy. So please go away. Stay away from me. I'm begging you. Get away from this place. You're a murderer. I want nothing to do with you. So please, just go away. As you say. As she had commanded, I took my leave of her cottage in somewhat of a haze. It should have come as no surprise, but in the four years since our last encounter, she had no kind words left to spare me. Yet even in her derision, I still felt myself being calmed by the sound of her voice. I debated with myself. Should I do as the Lord requested and capture her? Or should I let her go free, as I had done four years earlier? You already know what I decided to do though, don't you? That's right, I went with the first option. After all, I had no need for two tethers. While breaking down her door was still an option, the witch was wary of me. If she were to somehow manage to escape, there was no saying how the Lord might react. So I stood watch, waiting for her to step outside. The problem was, she never opened her door. It wasn't just me. It seemed she was wary of everyone. There was one exception though. The boy. She left the cottage for him. They went on walks together around the lake. It's uh, it's been a while since we last went on one of our walks, huh? I. I haven't been sleeping much, taking care of Nelly. Is her condition worsening again? Yeah. Rest assured, I will give her my blessing as many times as she needs. Uh, th thanks. I really, really appreciate it. The weather's kind of... not that great today, huh? Looks like we might get rain. It's probably not smart to stay outside much longer. Yesterday. I should get going. See you. Watching the two of them, it occurred to me that I could make good use of the boy. You have two options. Either you say no and protect the witch. Get away or you help me capture her. Get away from her right now. And if you choose the witch, I kill the girl. Get away. Make your decision. Get away from her. You have until the count of 10. If you don't choose, I kill the girl. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7. Uh, uh. Six. Five. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll help you. So get your sword out of her face. Don't kill her. I thought 
thought you'd hold on to the last second. <sighs> well, what are you waiting for? Let's get going. <sighs> get moving. <sighs> you pitiful little boy. Get back. No. S stay away from me. No. Help. D don't. Don't kill me. Take it. What? That's your share. Should last you long enough. Uh, why? 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 D did you t take my arm? Uh, wh what do you mean by share? Wh why? Why? Ah! Uh, uh, uh. Ah, uh, my, my, my arm. Ah, uh, 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 my arm. Ah, uh, my arm. No, put me down, please. Help, someone, please help. The witch with the miracle blood had regressed into an ordinary girl, and she cried in pain like a small child. I wasn't going to get very far with her wailing, so I gagged her, tied her up and threw her into a burlap sack. <laughs> Nothing personal. I just need your blood. <laughs> Without it, she'll lose her church. <laughs> she needs the money. <laughs> I needed some way of getting enough money to keep her church running. So the Lord made me an offer. If I brought him the witch with the miracle blood, he would finance a whole new church for her. So don't take it personally. How else is she supposed to take it? You cut off her arm. I tossed the sack into the cart I had waiting outside, and then made my way to the mansion as per the Lord's instructions. The two of us then locked the witch in the observation tower. When I told the Lord I had used the boy as bait to get to her to open the door, he gave an exasperated sigh and said, Involving a third party was not part of the plan. Is there anything at all in that head of yours, dog? I can kill him if that's a problem. Don't be hasty. Describe him for me. Did he seem like he came from a wealthy family? He's young, still in his teens. He lives with his little sister. He looked reasonably well off, probably of noble blood. You picked one hell of a target to use as your bait. Should I kill him? There are people in this world you can make disappear quietly. People no one will notice have gone missing. You're one of them. The boy, he most likely isn't. Was the boy at all interested in the witch's blood? He seemed to be. Well, that makes things a little easier. We just have to make him into an accomplice then. That's everything up to about six months ago. You know what happened next, I presume. I threatened Mel, forced him to join us. He needed the blood for his sister, but even without that excuse, he didn't have the courage to run. Me, on the other hand, I involved myself in my own will. I had no reason to try and get back out. In fact, being put in charge of one of the three keys gave me an excuse to meet up with her more often. The arrangement was quite beneficial for me. Hey, I heard the news. You were selected to be part of the Lord's personal guard. Now you've got it made. Congratulations. You exaggerate. It's nothing. Oh, not no need to be humble. He wouldn't have picked you if he didn't really trust you. Everyone around here knows just how hard it is to earn the Lord's trust. If you say so. It hasn't been easy for him, I hear. He only assigns those he really trusts to work so close to him. 
<laughs> I hope you're alright. He trusts you, I'm sure of it. I certainly can't tell the real reason I suddenly became his guard. And I've got some more exciting news too. The Lord sent a messenger for me earlier. Apparently he's building a new church and he wants me to serve as a nun there. Can you believe it? You shouldn't be surprised. You are the city saintess after all. It's a little wonder you'd be his first choice. I really don't think I'm that important. Do you not want the position? No, no, I'm delighted to have such an incredible opportunity. This will allow me to help so many more people than before. It's... it's wonderful news. That's good to hear. Tell me, I'm not wrong in thinking helping people is the one thing you want more than anything else, am I? Right in the wrong voice, sorry guys. <laughs> Right, that's what I want more than anything in the world. I see. Hey, um, smile for me, would you? Huh? I've been smiling this whole time, haven't I? Not just now. Forever. Of course, when I'm with you, nothing could possibly take the smile off my face. I'm glad to hear it. I never knew someone could lose so much weight while still eating every day. You might have to increase your portions. If there's anything in particular you want, just tell me. I hear children's voices. From outside. I hear children's voices. Ah, the kids here to see the saintess. It has gotten quite noisy out there of late, yes. Oh. The saint S. Your voice has gotten raspy too. Was that my doing? Did I take your voice? That's unfortunate. To me, your voice held far more value than your blood. And I took that away from you. Yes. You three took everything from me. So we did. Enough chatter, dog. The Lord's scheme was a success. The witch's blood brought with it an influx of donations which the Lord invested in various businesses in the city. I have no idea if the blood actually has miraculous powers, but there were certainly people claiming to have been healed by it. It wasn't long before people who weren't sick started making use of the supposed cure all medication, saying it had preventative properties as well. As word of the elixir spread, the Lord's prophets grew in kind. One fact was undeniable. The witch's blood stimulated the city's dramatic growth. And that's everything. Appalling, is it not? Morgana. If you hate me for what I did to her, you can take this sword and kill me with it. And you can have my key. I won't put up a fight. You have the right to exact punishment on me. Killing you would accomplish nothing. It is neither my place to forgive nor punish you. As much as it would make me feel better, doing so would serve no meaningful purpose. I would like you to give me a little time though. I need time to cool down enough that I can talk to you with a clear head. Of course. It's like a first for me to see Yukimasa so guilt-ridden, or at least by his facial features alone. Like I know he he doesn't feel guilt at all. He doesn't have he doesn't necessarily have the standard conscience that most of us do, but it's so odd seeing it. A little unsettling even. So you are still willing to speak with me, still willing to speak with me. I gave you my word. I told you I would help figure out what path you should take. You're an honorable man. I will not force your hand if you don't want to do this. You can tell me to leave, and I'll walk right out the door. More than anger or hatred, I'm simply, deeply pained. Maybe things would have turned out better if I were as sympathetic a man as you. People are supposed to be able to feel happy or sad for each other. I can't though, 
which must make me a beast. When you first met Morgana, you felt a desire to rescue her from the slave traders, did you not? You thought of someone other than yourself. I never saw that desire through though. My thirst far overpowered anything I may have wanted to do for her, and the next time we met, I sold it to the Lord. As I said before, there is no room for interpretation in the things I have done. Whatever I might have wanted to do at one point, it's all meaningless now. <clears throat> Regardless, anything I do for someone else is ultimately for my own benefit, because it's what I need. Well, at least you're honest, dude. No matter how selfish your motivations may ultimately be, please let me believe some part of you does genuinely want to help her. Alright. I know I'll sound like a hypocrite for saying this, but sitting back and waiting for her to die is not what I want. When I cut off her arm, I didn't feel any of the thrill or euphoria that I usually do when I take my sword to someone. I can't say whether that means I had a conscience, if but for a moment, or I just wasn't myself at the time. If you can save her though, please do. I can't do anything. If I try, I'll only make things worse. I cannot do everything on my own either. Give me your word that you will atone to Morgana for your actions. While I doubt making reparations will clear me of, it, of my crimes, if that is what you want me to do, that is what I will do. Can I ask you something? What is it? Tell me more about my next life. I want to know what kind of man I am. I want to know every mistake I make, all the details. I warn you, it's a tale far more barbaric than anything you can imagine. Do you still want to hear it? I do. And I have little doubt that I will believe it. If you're worried I might react the way I did earlier, I'll lay down my sword. You can tie me up too if you want. That won't be necessary. I'm going to trust you. I'll tell you the whole hopelessly tragic truth. Everything I saw with no embellishments. Please do. And so, I told him the tale I witnessed beyond the second door. That he lost his memory in a shipwreck. That he was treated like a beast by the people in the land where he washed up. That he massacred countless people. And that he took the life of his lover who had come in search of him, never wavering in her belief that he was still alive. I told him about the white-haired girl. I told him about the things he made Giselle do. Ah, sorry, do. I didn't hide anything. As I spoke, he would occasionally grimace or his eyes would go wide for a moment, but not once did he interrupt me. He sat there in silence until I finished. You weren't kidding. That was far worse than I had imagined. It is the truth, though. You become the target of Morgana's loathing, and you are led back to this mansion. That is what lies in your future. As difficult as it may be to comprehend that person is you, the man who does all those things hundreds of years from now is you. I really am a beast. A horrendously precarious creature. As I interpret it, when you lost your memory, you also lost everything you used to suppress your nature. You lost the foundation you had built, and as a result, you were no longer able to maintain that balance. Would that mean that what I am now is, comparatively speaking, human? No, I'm no different now. I have no more control over myself when I'm killing people than the man you described. You've seen me do reprehensible things. And in spite of that, you were never condescending or insulting, never acted disgusted or afraid of me. Are all angels as compassionate as you? I am not an angel. I was simply biting my tongue. Oop, that's uh... Are you not, are you afraid of me then? I am not afraid of you, no. What are you then? I don't understand. I am of the belief that now is not the appropriate time for me to allow my personal feelings to influence my actions. My task is to save Morgana. If I'm to be honest with you for a moment, I despise the man you are in the future, but I'm also equally frustrated at myself. 
You're right, the things you did were inexcusable. You murdered innocents. You killed the woman who came, to, who came searching for you. But on a personal level, what angers me the most is that you put blood on the hands of the woman I love. I know very well that, to you, it's something you haven't done yet, but it was still your soul. It tears me apart inside that I couldn't return in time to stop it. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone who wouldn't be angry to know someone they care about had received that kind of treatment. I suppose. If that's how you feel though, aren't you interested in taking revenge on me? As I mentioned before, there are times when allowing your emotions to take the reins is the wrong course of action. This, th sorry, this is one of those times. Seeking vengeance is the wrong thing for me to do right now. If I can eliminate Morgana's hatred, the three of your souls will be set free as well. So you're going to save me too? Yes, I am. I don't consider myself worthy of redemption, especially not after hearing about the things I will do. I'm a beast through and through. A twisted, psychopathic monster. You were conflicted though. You struggled against the creature that dwelled inside you. It's true that you found perverted joy in violence and murder, but you also felt kindness, which caused a part of you to seek peace. And the same can be said of you in this time as well. If you actually were nothing but a beast, or rather nothing but a man that derived pleasure in killing, maybe then I could have truly reviled you. Then you would be irredeemable, no matter what had turned you into that. No matter how much pain and suffering had driven you to that point. But your instability, your constantly shifting desires, your mental frailty, all appeared in me as very human traits. Tell me, how should I live my life from here on? What is it you want most? I... The easiest road for me would be the one I walk now to continue being a killer. No fighting my desires, no, res no resisting what's inside me. Would that be my salvation? To abandon my humanity entirely? I don't know what I should do. What I'm supposed to do. I'm at a complete loss about everything. I would like to believe that your desire to live in peace is sincere. And that's what I want for you too. It will, be the, it will be the more trying path, yes, but you will have to fight against your nature to stay on it. But we live in the human world. And you, also have a, you, and you also have Pauline who wants the same thing, extending her hand for you, inviting you to join her. So I encourage you to suppress your urges. Your life will not be easy for it, but I implore you to take the rocky road for your own sake and for hers. Even if it means my entire life is built on a foundation of lies, before today, I believed it was wrong not to be true to oneself. But as I listened to you, but as I listened to you tell your story, I came to realize that maybe there are exceptions. Some things you can and possibly should keep locked inside you where they can't hurt anyone else. However, I also think you have a tendency to try and act too perfect around her, both in this life and the next. You cover up so much of yourself you become an entirely different person. You can be your conflicted and perfect self around her. The man you are right now, lost in trying to find his way. I have little doubt she will accept that man. What you need most is restraint. I see. So tell me, do you think my future can be changed? I don't know for certain, so all I can do is speculate. But as you share the same soul, I expect any changes you make now will be reflected in your future incarnation. I have my work cut out for me then. Pauline. She believed in me. She put her faith in a beast and went out in search of him. I cannot allow myself to be the kind of monster that would murder a woman like her. I have to change. I will change the future. You can do it. When my life here comes to an end, I vow to make my next one better. Thank you for listening to me.
and for giving me guidance. I can't say I'm particularly suited for the job. Knowing that my words are going to influence the direction of another's life is an unimaginable amount of pressure. I don't know, I'd say you pull it off well enough. If you ever decide to quit being an angel, you'd make a damn convincing missionary. I have no interest in being a missionary, and as I've told you, I'm not an angel. That's too bad. I joined the Church of Mikkel. <laughs> I don't know if that was a joke, but well, hey, he just cracked one. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. We finally got uh, Yukimasa over here on our side, which was a trying path to begin with. But here we are. So, all that's left now is the Lord. So thank you all for watching, and until the next one.